It's David Wowie, Sazanka! Strong stomach, strong legs, and strong pink hair. Is she worth it? And how do you use her? Here's a skills team and grasser guide just for you, baby. And you may be wondering, is she a support unit, an attack unit? What on earth is she? I'll be answering all that for you right now. And of course, we've got a damage test. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And a huge shout out to my first super member, Isaiah. He also creates another Eden content, so check him out. Become one of this channel's first ever super members and I'll shout you out too. I'll get into the juicy stuff soon, but firstly, if you've got Suzanka's 4.5 star version and want to upgrade her to a 5 star version, you just need one Sukuna Hikona Tome, I can't believe I said that, which you can randomly find by completing the man-eating marsh another dungeon. Trade that in with the rest of the standard upgrade items with the lady at the time's forgotten stop and you've got yourself a 5 star Suzanka. To Stellar Awaken Suzanka, you need 3 star charts. Check out my Stellar Awakening guide for more information. Now to the juicy stuff. Suzanka is a fire slash unit. She was introduced to us as the frightful and quirky medic in the Wormrest saga. She's part of the original Arcadia crew. What's interesting about each playable member of the Arcadia crew so far is that each one of them is a different element. Rise is water, Ceres is both piercing and earth, Melpithia is wind, and now Suzanka is fire. And what's even cooler is that each character gains unique buffs depending how many Arcadia members you have in the team. So the more Arcadia members you have, the better the benefits could be. On top of that, if there are four Arcadia members in the front line, each member can also change the element or attack type of your Arcadia team depending which zone is set. So in Tazonka's case, if you have four Arcadia members in the front line and Raging Fire Stance is activated, your whole team gets Kaleido and becomes a Fire Element team. This helps your team become more versatile and allows you to fight many kinds of bosses with different weaknesses without having to change your characters around too much. With this in mind, let's talk about Tazonka's best skills and which ones I'd personally equip. Before before I do, a huge thank you to Seriously Fun who was lucky enough to get Suzanka and give me his thoughts and video content on her. His channel has actually helped me out a lot in the past. Check out his channel, I'll link to it in my description. Back to Suzanka's skills. Most people will probably be able to give Suzanka three main skills if she's still awakened, one stellar burst skill and some other passive skills. But before you even do anything in battle, a few things happen. First is the link ability I told you about where everyone's attack type becomes fire if you've set Raging Fire Stance. On top of that, if there are two or more Arcadia members in the front line, you get 30% wind type resistance instantly. Isn't that great? But remember, this only works if you've set Fire Raging Stance first. So if you want this passive working right away, you need another character to set Raging Fire Stance on turn one or use Suzanka's stellar skill Tensho Suzanka on turn 1. More on this stealth skill soon. So on top of this link ability, the next thing that happens is you get a plus 10 stout hearts at the start of the battle and you get additional stout hearts per guiding light member at the start of each turn. What on earth does this even mean? What are these stacks? I'll tell you what. If you have 20 stout hearts stacked, your basic attack changes from a boring old axe wing to a skill called sky bloom lift. A skill that can be useful, but also a bit weird. I'll tell you why soon. Skybloom Lift inflicts two XL Slash attacks on all enemies, and it increases skill damage by 20 times. Check out this video from Seriously Fun. Even before any buffs were put on his level 88 Stellar Awakened Suzanka, she does some pretty decent damage with Skybloom Lift. The next important thing it does is that it stacks three Sky Blooms on all Guiding Light allies and gives knockback immunity. All right, first we have Stout Heart stacks. Now we have Sky Bloom stacks. I know it can be confusing, but let me explain. What do Sky Bloom stacks do? At the start of the turn, if the character has a Sky Bloom stack, they'll consume it and be granted hold ground. What this means is if an enemy attacks you with a killer shot, you survive with 1 HP. So having a Sky Bloom stack would be great on your characters if you know that an enemy is about to deal a death blow. 
So having 20 Stout Heart stacks gives you the skill Sky Bloom Lift, and using the skill Sky Bloom Lift gives you Sky Bloom stacks. So as I said, the first benefit you get of a Sky Bloom stack is you can get Hold Ground. I ask seriously fun if that means Tazanka can replace someone like Radius AS, whose chivalry skill essentially makes your team invincible for three turns. He reminded me that one thing you have to be aware of is that some enemies like the Ukoji clan, they often deal multiple death blows. Hold Ground only keeps you alive for one shot. So if you receive multiple massive hits in the same turn, you still won't survive. You'll only survive the first hit in that turn. Also, if a character with a Sky Bloom stack has less than 25% HP, they won't get Hold Ground. Instead, their HP and MP will recover to 100%. So, so back to Suzanka's skill. Sky Bloom Lift. So it deals a bunch of damage to enemies, prevents everyone from one hit kills, or if a unit has less than 25%, restores their HP and MP. It sounds good, right? Then why do I think it's so weird? Because it costs 20 Stout Heart stacks before you can use it. If your Suzanka isn't Stellar Awakened, and if you have four Guiding Light members at the front of your team, it will take you three turns before you can even use this skill. Is there a way to make this faster? Sort of. If your Suzanka is Stellar Awakened and you've unlocked the Stout Heart stacking skill, you'll get an extra 10 Stout Hearts at the start of battle. This free 10 Stout Hearts on top of the 10 you normally automatically get at the start of the battle gives you 20 Stout Heart stacks right away, which is great because with 20 stacks you can now use sky bloom lift right away but then you only get these 20 stout hearts at the start of battle you don't get them every turn you only get up to four every turn if you have four light units in the front of your team so to get another 20 stout heart stacks you need to wait five more turns which is four times five to use sky bloom lift again so realistically you will only use this skill once in a fight if you're clearing mobs or an easy-ish enemy. On a side note, this skill will actually be very great for dungeon runs as it costs 0 MP. Or it can be useful every 5 turns during drawn out boss fights. Speaking of which, if you're having a multi-turn fight, Sky Bloom Lift is actually designed to set Tazanka up to use some other skills. What skills are they? First is Swooning Spell. If you don't use Sky Bloom Lift beforehand, all Swooning Spell will do is give two small Fire Slash attacks and inflict stun. But if you do use Sky Bloom Lift beforehand and you get the Sky Bloom stacks, Swooning Spell will also inflict permanent pain and poison on your enemy. This could be good if you don't have a pain and poison setter in your team, but I personally wouldn't waste my skill slot with this skill as you probably want another character to inflict pain and poison on turn 1. Another skill that a Sky Bloom stack enhances is Jujensu Ranbu, which normally just gives 5 large slash attacks on random enemies. With this stack, it gives you a whopping 700% increase in damage and increases another force. Oh, I oh, just burped. Oh, gas. Which can be useful in some battles. But with your limited skill slots, I would personally skip this skill for the next skill, Intensive Research. Intensive Research normally gives 2 XL Fire Slash attacks on a single enemy and reduces their resistance for a nice 5 turns. But if you have Sky Bloom stacked from using Sky Bloom Lift beforehand, you get a sweet 700% increase in damage and you double the debuff effect so you reduce your enemy's resistance by 50% instead of 25, making you win your fight a lot faster. The best part is that it also gives your allies barrier pierce which is perfect against enemies with barrier. The twist with this barrier pierce is that it, you only get it one time so ideally you can rely on this during another force when you want to finish off your enemy or you can just keep repeating intensive research until you run out of sky bloom stacks. Probably the most important skill of Suzanka's is treatment which instantly makes it one of the best support units in the game and the best part is you don't need a sky bloom stack but you do need something else. What treatment does is it first weakens the enemies by reducing their power, intelligence and speed by 35% for 5 turns. 
Then it increases your team's power, intelligence and speed by 50% for 5 turns. This by itself already makes it sort of but not completely comparable to skills by the best support characters out at the moment like Mune for Alters, I'll do my best, Yifanol Souls Bianak Boa and Milpifia's future side get him. And it gets better, the Guiding Light members of your team get double the buff effects giving them a 100% increase in power, intelligence and speed. There's so many good things about this. So knowing all of this information, what skills should you equip Suzanka with? If your Suzanka isn't Stellar Awakened, I would use the following skills. Unless you're expecting to be in a long battle or have 4 skill slots available, I would actually avoid using Sky Bloom Lift because it may take too many turns to get its effects. I would then use the following skills that don't need Sky Bloom stacking and use Suzanka as a pure support character. I'd use Bitter Medicine to increase everyone's critical rate for 3 moves. I'd use Preventative Care. I haven't mentioned this skill yet but it restores your team's HP by 50% and restores statuses. It also gives the team status immunity for 3 turns. This is very useful if you're fighting an enemy that inflicts status effects on you. Then I'd use Treatment to buff everyone up. Of course these skills aren't set in stone and you may pick and choose your skills depending on which enemy you're fighting. What skills would I pick for a Stellar Awakened Suzanka? If your Suzanka is Stellar Awakened and you've unlocked the Battle Start Stout Heart Stacking skill, can't believe I said that, that was like a tongue twister. I'd use Sky Bloom Swift as skill 1 to deal some damage while giving everyone 3 Sky Bloom stacks. I'd use Treatment to pretty much inject your team with steroids and get them super strong. And Suzanka's third skill will be her Stellar skill, Tensho Suzanka. When enhanced it does a crazy 5 double x slash attack on all enemies and damage is increased 5 fold. Not only that, it increases the resistances of your party members by 30% and increases damage by 50%. The best part is, if they're guiding light characters, these effects are doubled. But remember, this effect only works for the current turn only. But that's not everything you get. You also get a 50% damage reduction barrier for one turn. And if you're using it during Stellar Burst, you inflict an extra 900% damage and deploy Raging Fire Stance and deploy another zone. And all Guiding Light characters get Overthrow, which means they inflict more damage the higher the enemy's level. While we're talking about Stellar Skills, let's look at the other ones you can unlock. On top of the Battle Stout Heart Stacking, which we've discussed, you can unlock a Stellar Burst Activation Bonus, which reduces your enemy's fire resistance, and the Stellar Burst Gauge Fill Bonus when you have two or more characters with Dragon Killer personalities in the front line, such as the Arcadia members, the Stellar Burst Gauge Rate increases. So in summary, here are the skills I'd normally equip Suzanka with. Of course, there are always exceptions. If Suzanka is not still awakened, I'd go with preventative care, bitter medicine, and then treatment. If Suzanka is stellar awakened, and you can afford the skills I mentioned, I'd go with Sky Bloom Lift, treatment, and then finally, the stellar skill Tenshaw Suzanka. So how about teams? What teams are best with Suzanka? Everything about Suzanka is built to favor Guiding Light characters. If you don't know what a Guiding Light character is, there are two types of characters in this game. Guiding Light characters and Luring Shadow characters. To check if your character is a Guiding Light character, tap on the status and you'll see that icon here. The yellow icon means they're Guiding Light character. A good team for Suzanka would be an Arcadia team and so far every Arcadia team member is a Guiding Light type of character. And with an Arcadia team we've already got two attackers, Aldo and Sirius. We've got Melpifia who can act as a tank, healer and support as well as Suzanka who doubles up as a support who can deal some decent attacks once in a while. The attack version of the Dragon Sidekick Iridian can be the Pain and Poison Center for your team. And as I mentioned earlier, you can keep changing the element of that team by setting the appropriate zone. So for example, you can use Melpifia to set Wind King Stance to make it a wind team, and Suzanka to set Raging Fire Stance, making everyone in this team a fire-based user. But there's a sad twist to this. Suzanka needs to Stellar Burst before she can set Raging Fire Stance. Will that be too late in the battle? One workaround to this is to add a Fire Zone setter in the team, but if you want to keep it pure Arcadia, you may want to give Suzanka or someone in your team the Grasser called Spell Raging Fire as it allows them to set Raging Fire Stance at your command whenever you want. But if you don't have a full Arcadia squad, don't worry. Put Suzanka with any Guiding Light damage dealer and see the results. Here we have a damage test by Bungpo. Shout out to Bungpo by the way, check out his channel when you have the chance. Here with the help of Suzanka, he destroys the Ukwuji clan in one move. 
where on turn one, all Suzanka had to use was treatment on top of a buff by Claudius yes, as well as Illulu Ultra setting Dazzling Slash Dance. Then we have Aldo using Starworm Slash to finish off this throuple in one fell swoop. You can check out the rest of the damage test videos by Bung Po, which I've linked for other examples. So how about Grasta and Equipment? They've designed Suzanka to be a decent attacker compared to all the units, but a much better support unit. Even if she has some okay attacks, what you'd probably want to use Suzanka for most are her buffs. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there are any unique weapons, armor or badges that can benefit Suzanka in every situation greatly. That's why which weapon she uses isn't the most important and you just need the armor you have with the most defense as possible to keep her alive. That being said, you may want to equip weapons that increase her speed so she's able to contribute more during another force. For example, the Dryad's Axe as well as a suite of other weapons that increase speed which you can find in the Another Eden unofficial wiki which I've linked in the description of this video. As for badges, if you're not using a speed badge, I'd pick badges that are most suitable for your situation. If Suzanka just needs to defend the team for a few turns, the Patron Shield badge may be useful as it gives Suzanka a shield for three turns, or you can give her a badge that increases the Another Force combo rate. My usual go-to Grasta for support units, Boost Proficiency Grasta can improve your buff effects. The Proficiency Debuff Resistance Grasta can help reduce any debuffs inflicted on your team. The Falcon's Blessing Grasta will allow Suzanka to do the first move during battle, which can be important if you want her to apply buffs on characters that may be faster than her. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to activate Raging Fire Stance earlier in the battle and you don't have another Fire Zone setter in your team besides Suzanka, you may want to have Suzanka or another character equip the grass that called Spell Raging Fire to activate it and receive its benefits. For anyone who's been using Suzanka for a while, if you recommend any other Grasta, let me know. And finally, would I personally recommend getting Suzanka? If you are expecting a super strong fire slash attacker, you may be disappointed. I would instead aim for someone like Stellar Awakened Tsukiha and even Minaka, you can be much better attackers on paper. Suzanka is better used as a support character and not a support character for just anyone in your team, but guiding light support characters. It's odd that they've given us two support units in a row, Melpithia and now Suzanka. And I find it a little bit disappointing how some of her skills have limitations. So for example, she can't just instantly set Raging Fire Stance, even though she's the dedicated Fire Zone setter in the team. You actually need to set a Stellar Burst skill before you can use it. And her Pain and Poison skill requires you to use it on turn two, which is unusual as a lot of the new characters let you set Pain and Poison instantly or on turn one. Anyway, at the moment, we have some already fantastic support characters who can really help you heavy hitters reach damage cap and destroy super bosses. The ones that stand out to me are Melody AS, Yifa AS, Tsukiha Alter, Munfa Alter, and even Melpithia. Watch my Yifa AS and Melpithia guides for more information. Now we have Suzanka, who may remind a lot of people of the fire support unit Tsukiha Alter, who really isn't that old. She came out quite recently. If you have any of the support units I just mentioned, you may not need to be in a hurry to get Suzanka, as they can all still do something similar to what Suzanka can do, but not completely. That being said, if you want to collect all Arcadia members, then there's no harm in trying to get Suzanka, and she's still an amazing support character. She plays a key part in the Rai Saga trilogy, and has some fantastic artwork. I'm still trying to get her myself, because I want all them members, baby! Look what we have here, it's a fancy pantsy YouTube and screen. Check out my other videos, man. It helps the algorithm, man.